Malak, Strongheart and Bronze Dragon, each sold separately. Beware, Strongheart. You will cast an evil spell and steal the treasure. Well, evil is no match for good. The treasure is safe. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figures, Kellogg, War Duke, Bronze Dragon, Strongheart, each sold separately from LJN. All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Top 10 Toys. This week, I'm going to look at something yeah, pretty near and dear to my heart, and that's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, this was a very weird toy line. This They had a number of different types of toys that they released, and they were all really cool, and I, and I had quite a few of them, uh, I must admit. Now, Dungeons and Dragons, apart from being a comic book that I... Uh, did uh, happen to enjoy uh also was obviously the game that everybody knows of uh unfortunately i didn't have a lot of people in my area who were interested in such things so i kind of had to force some of my friends to try to play it and i wasn't of an age to really understand what i was doing so i had all the dice and we would do things like make up the character sheets but then never really got into a really Good adventure. So I gotta say that I never really got to play Dungeons and Dragons, and I've always wanted to. Even as an adult, I would play now if there were people in my area that did it. But I don't know. Maybe one of these days I'll get around to it. Uh, that said, it's it's a very interesting concept to me. Just this uh this idea, and they have all these different modules that you could have gotten uh, to have these many different adventures. That they would have maps and uh, plans, and it just seems like it would have been a good time. That said, uh, the other real big touch point for me with uh, Dungeons and Dragons had to have been the uh, those old uh, Choose Your Adventure novels. Those, uh, you know, turn to page fifteen for uh, you know to open the door or open the treasure chest, and you know it could have been booby trapped or you could get the treasure. Like it was a a fun little thing that uh, you got to make decisions and uh, turn to the page to get the results of what you decided. Uh, I actually just ordered a couple of uh, these old books online to try to. Uh, uh, and engage my uh, eight-year-old son. So I figure we'll go through it and uh, see uh, see how the adventures turn out for us as uh, as we read through them. Now that said, going back to the toys, and with that's what we're here for. It's not for the books. It's not for the games. We're here to talk about the toys. And uh, the toys, for the most part, was largely based on a regular kind of action figure series, as you can kind of see in some of the uh, you know, advertisements here I got up on the screen. I um, mean, there was bases like the you know the Fortress of Fangs and yeah, just a, a lot of the line were just fantastical creatures and and uh, warriors and and wizards and all you know all that fun fantasy stuff. Uh, but again, the line wasn't just limited to you know just those action figures. So I'm just going to give them a quick little brief overview on some of the things that the, the line had, and then we're going to get into our top ten. So without further ado, now one of the weird little things they offer were wind up toys. Again, they were trying to engage a lot of different age groups and a lot of different, you know, collector types. So they had some of these wind-up creatures that you could buy. Uh, I don't remember having any of these, but, you know, I don't remember everything that I used to have. So there's a chance that I might have, you know, had the odd wind-up toy here or there. But uh, you see, they were all branded the same Advanced Dungeons & Dragons brand, and it just was a little wind-up creatures. Uh, in addition, they also had these, like, uh, PVC-type figures that uh, they were almost like, I don't know if anybody else had, like, the Smurfs. They they weren't posable. They weren't articulated action figures. These were just, you know, posed kind of fingers. So so here, you know, we have, you know, a good frog goes to war. These look like Kermit getting ready to battle, and uh, that's what these guys were. I think they were Bullywogs or something like that. Uh, don't remember all, all the names uh, yeah, today, but... That was something else that they had as a, as an option, as well as some of these more like bendable creatures. I think this was a, a Hydra, and then it was kind of a flexible, uh, you know, rubbery kind of toy that it almost could be passed off as a Godzilla monster uh, of some kind. But it basically, you know, you could bend and pose it in a lot of different ways, and that was just another type of toy that they had. In addition to some of the other monsters, like this bronze dragon that uh, went more with the action figures, uh, the action figure line that this series had. So again, they 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 thought of a lot of different things. They had a lot of different options for people to uh, buy, collect, play, uh, and you know all that fun stuff. Because again, this is built out of a game culture that had uh, where you use your imagination for the most part. Sure, you can have you know a lot of the little things to help 
tell that story. Like the, you're going to have your little pewter figures that you could paint yourself and all of that as representatives, uh, you know, on the maps and things like that. But for the most part, a lot of it was just the story being told by your dungeon master and, uh, how your adventure played out. So getting to the action figures here, these toys, you know, they, they were you know, pretty standardized. I mean, they they weren't bad for the time. Uh, they didn't have that, uh, very small, they were larger size. Uh, they weren't in that weird muscle pose of the masters of the universe. And yet they weren't, uh, so rigid as like a Kenner star Wars where they, they had some decent motion to them, uh, some decent articulation and, uh, the weapons were really great. Uh, I will admit because I used a lot of the weapons from these toys for other figures. Like in particular, this, uh, this guy looks like a Disney Hercules character of some kind. Like I remember taking that, uh, that kind of Spartan uh, helmet and putting it on like a Masters of the Universe figure because, you know, they had that softer kind of like rubbery head and you could just kind of force a lot of things on if it didn't fit uh, exactly right. And, you know, giving like a lot of these swords and shields, uh, it, it was fun. I, I mixed and matched a lot of my stuff when I was a kid. Yeah, use your imagination. That's what I always did anyway. Uh, but, you know, so they had like those larger figures and then they had uh, a later edition where they actually added some some motion to them, the Battlematic uh action figures as well, where I think there it's like a little lever in the back would gave you a little, almost like a superpowers kind of a, a action, like where the, the figures would actually do something. So that was another selling point, uh, which is going to lead us kind of into our uh, number 10 pick. So with our first edition into our uh, top 10, we're going to go with Kellick. And uh, this was a wizard figure. And uh, this was on that blue carded, uh, later card, I think, that also was most of the Battlematic guys were, but I don't know if this Kellick was a Battlematic. I, I don't see the uh, notation on the on the packaging that it was in the image here, but this figure averages only about, you know, 56 bucks or so. Uh, I tried to do my best to gather up all the numbers for all of these, so a lot of my choices here in the 10 were just some of the ones that stood out most to me, as well as, you know, how much I could find, uh, you know, sale price-wise. So Kellick was sell sells for about 56 bucks or so, uh, but there was a high of about 111. Loose, you, you can find these things a lot of times in like the $10, $25 range, really. Uh, but it all depends on what exactly you're looking for. I mean, a lot of these pieces have, you know, a lot of weapons. They have a lot of accessories, staffs, even clothes and cloaks and clothing. Like Kellick here, you can see he has a wizard robe, which isn't always, you know, found with the figure. So if you have one, that helps, you know, helps the resale value. If you don't, you're going to get a little bit less. So Kellick at about 56 bucks is why he's coming in at number 10. So this is going to take us to move on to our number nine. And our number nine is one I do remember having. Um, this North Lord figure uh, is coming in about 80, 82 bucks or so with a high of about 150. Uh, I just remember the uh, the light blue on this. With I think I lost that helmet pretty quickly, uh, but the shield was really cool. That axe was another one that I uh, let my He-Man figures use a lot of times as well. And, and the swords. Again, the weapons were really good on, on this series of toys, I will admit. That's the thing that really uh, stood out for me. For whatever reason, when I was a, a kid, I really focused in on the weapons. Like, a lot of times, I liked the weapons more than the figures they might have come with. I remember there was, like, uh, these pirate figures. I can't remember the toy, like Dark Shadows or something. It was like a pirate toy line, but I just really liked the weapons that those guys came with, but I didn't really care so much about the figures. I just wanted the weapons. But that sidebar aside... Uh, so North Lord is our number nine, because again, uh, you can see it's a you know, pretty standardized figure. It is kind of a cross of like a big G.I. Joe almost. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of the uh, of the posability, but it, but they're on a little bit of a larger scale. So this was closer to like a five inch, uh, you know, five inch size, maybe like a maybe toy. And again, the uh, weapons were the key key selling point for me. But North Lord is our number nine. So we're going to move on from him to our number eight, which uh, this little guy, the dwarf, this is Elkhorn. You can see he's got a pretty cool little uh, sword and shield as well. Everybody came with some great accessories. And uh, Elkhorn is going to be the first one to crack that $100 mark, and he's averaging about 122 bucks or so. And uh, the high that I found was about 165 but and that was a Battlematic version of uh, this figure, which had a little, uh, I think, a sword swinging action of some kind. Uh, but Elkhorn, you can see pretty cool mold. And these are the things that you, you know, you would, for the most part, think of. When you think of, like, a fantasy figure, uh, you get the dwarves, you get the soldiers, the paladins, the uh, wizards, the mages. Uh, some of the color choices were, you know, I think made to kind of get kids to 
you know, want to pick these up off the rack. Like they may not be the traditional, uh, you know, warrior type colors. You know, so you give the dwarf a blue beard and a really yellow gold helmet. So it pops, it stands out a little bit more, just like North Lord having a lot of light blue uh, in his uh, uniform. It may not have been uh, traditional in the sense of what you might imagine uh, some of these characters might be in, in that kind of sword and sorcery world, but it helped the toys, again, pop off that shelf. So Elkhorn was our number eight, which is going to take us to number seven. And uh, this is not the most well-sculpted figure, I would say, in the line. This Zorgar, he uh, he is not a pretty man. He is definitely not a pretty man. If you look at that face, that's a face only a mother could love. It's a very sloth-like. And uh, he actually doesn't come with a lot of uh, uh, you know, accessories there. It looks like he's got a little bit of a studded club, and that's really, really it. Maybe a little dagger as well. But this, this is a rough-looking dude, I just got to say. But, hey... He is our number six, uh, seven. Sorry, I'm sorry, Zorgar, and he's averaging 175 bucks, and uh, the high was about 250. So Zorgar still ain't cheap, even if he ain't pretty, he ain't cheap. Which is going to take us to our number six, and uh, with number six, we are looking at a Battlematic figure, and this is uh, Strongheart, I believe his name is. Yeah, Strongheart. This is a Battlematic figure. This is averaging about 190 bucks, and uh, the high, I think there's the only one that sold, was just this one. Uh, the regular figure is only about uh, $75 for the basic kind of carded version of this, but the Battlematic, uh, you know, sold for a premium about 190. Uh, this is like traditional looking knight. You know, he's got the you know, the winged helmet, he's got the plume coming out of the top there, um, silver armor, little blue, obvious, obvious hero, Definite hero look and a pretty cool sword to come with them. So Strongheart is our number six, which is going to take us to our top five. And starting off our top five, we have this elf looking like a figure. Uh, I want to say her name is Mercyon. And uh, I found one sold for about 222 bucks, which is why she's coming in at uh, number five. Uh, pretty cool. She's got a little staff. Uh, looks, She's a good cleric female character. That's another thing. You didn't get a lot of uh, warrior type or female characters in a lot of these lines, or if you did, you usually just got the one. And it looks like Mercyon is our, our one for this Dungeons and Dragons toy line. And uh, again, I'm not sure if she's an elf, but she definitely looked like an elf to me, or that's how I imagined her when I had her yeah, <laughs> to play with back in those days. And as you can see, uh, a lot of times uh, in what I can find with these pictures, the uh, the robes and whatnot, they, those get lost along the way. So you can see she's got the just chainmail armor underneath, which is still a pretty cool, pretty cool look. But uh, if you want to get that premium, you got to have all the accessories uh, to go with it. But this little uh, double studded staff was uh, still kind of pretty cool. I think I actually let my G.I. Joes use it because it fit into their hands. Uh, you know, broken thumb here or there. But again, weapons. I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I like them. So... <laughs> We're going to move on to our number four, and our number four was probably one of my favorites of uh, this line, and this is that War Duke uh, character. Just awesome-looking villain look. Got that tough-looking blue helmet with the kind of like bat wings flowing out, the, the pretty cool armor. It's almost got a an uneven two-faced kind of quality to it with the armor like on one side and a more uh, raw you know, warrior on the other, uh, and get a Pretty tough sword, pretty cool shield. Uh, War Duke was uh, definitely, like I said, one, one of my favorites. And uh, this came in at about averaging about 240 bucks. And I found an AFA eight, graded 80 that uh, sold for about $320 uh, for that War Duke. So that kind of uh, moved up the average. I usually don't work in uh, AFA graded uh, figures into the normal averaging, but uh, there aren't a lot of sales for these uh, Dungeons and Dragons figures. So I had to take what I could find. Uh, so that is what we had there. And again, just checking out this figure, it was just an awesome sculpt uh, to me. Uh, I, I love the just the glowing eyes inside that helmet. Again, just gorgeous, gorgeous figure. And uh, brings my memories back, uh, rushing back to me. So with that, this is going to take us into our top three. And our uh, number three is a character called Hawkler, who uh, sold for $345. And uh, Loose, this is still, uh, I think, one sold for 136 So Hawkler's a, a little bit tough. Uh, 
he looks like he's a, a like a shirtless warrior, but if you actually look at it, I think that is just the color of his shirt is just that kind of like a, a beige, just kind of generic looking tunic of some kind. And uh, so it does look like he's a shirtless warrior, but if you look at the mold, you can see the buttons, uh, I think, on the shirt. I don't know if he's sleeveless or not, but this Hawkler figure, uh, you know, it pretty generic looking to me, to be honest. Uh, not Definitely not my favorite. I mean, the bow is kind of cool. But, uh, and it looks like he comes with a, yeah, might have a, is that a hawk that came with him? I can't really see very clearly, but still, Hawkler, I mean, it would make sense if he did. Uh, definitely not my favorite character, but still, I don't even know if I had this one. This one does not ringing any bells, but he's still our number three because uh, 345 bucks is uh, nothing to sneeze at. So, moving on to number two. Number two, we are going with another hero character, and this is Deeth who sold for $455 uh, carded here. This is, again, another Battlematic figure. You see that pretty cool eagle shield. There's a, looks like a spike mace, like a like a swinging. I think those things are called a mace. I, I'm not sure if I'm getting the, uh, the weapon uh, terminology correct tonight. But uh, sword, shield, looks much, you know, like a knight uh, that you would expect. Pretty cool figure. And again, these Battlematics, I think they're a little harder to find because, like I said, I think these were a later release and they might have made less, um, you know, usually near towards the end of a toy line when they're shutting down, uh, they don't make as many as they might have in the initial run. So I think that's why we might see a premium on some of these Battlematics. At least that's what I could find. So Deeth is our number two, uh, number two character here, or figure, I should say, which is going to take us to our number one. And our number one is another villain. And this is Grimsword and another Battlematic character. And Grimsword is coming in at a solid $500. Uh, again, another villain. Pretty cool sculpt. That snake kind of wrapped around the armor. Uh, he also has like a mace, like a spiked ball mace on a chain that he's swinging around with a shield. Awesome looking armor. That looks like little dragon heads coming off the top of his helm. Not as cool as War Duke to me. His face uh, and mold almost kind of reminds me of a Micronauts figure. It looks like a little bit like Lord Zardon, but uh, or maybe a Shogun Warrior even uh, shrunken down. But still really cool and uh, definitely worth having. I mean, I do kind of like that snake, that snake wrapped around the armor, and it's a nice touch to have that kind of like flaming tongue uh, moving up to the corner of that uh, spiked out shoulder that uh, his armor has. So I think it is a pretty cool figure, regardless. Again, I'm a little biased. War Duke was uh, was my favorite, so I was kind of hoping he could come out on top. But hey, the numbers the numbers speak for themselves. So 500 bucks, Grim Sword is coming in on the top. So that is my list of 10. But as you know by now, I don't just leave it there. Uh, I always have to have honorable mentions. These, as you notice, these were just figures. These were just the straight action figures that kind of typical that you might expect. And as I mentioned at the top of this uh, this video, there were a lot of different other types of toys that they released with this line. So I kind of broke up the section of uh, honorable mentions into uh, kind of two parts. So the first grouping I'm gonna show you are more like the, the PVC and uh, like the bendable type uh, uh, type figures that came separately, no, you know, non-articulated non really, and uh, more rubbery kind of like a standard almost statuesque kind of things and then after that we'll have like the uh the monsters and the uh the bases basically so let's get into it so for my first honorable mention again going with these uh pvc figures is the shambling mound i know what you're thinking you're looking at this you see man thing at least that's what i see i see man thing when i look at it but this is the shambling mound you can pretend it's man thing all you want. It's a still a pretty cool sculpt, pretty cool mold. And I got to say, I did love that bag of gold that he came with. Again, I just love the accessories. The accessories were the best, whether it be the weapons or even things like this. Like this little sack of gold was uh, was nice to have a prize to have you know, your little heroes going and searching for. So shambling mound. Uh, you know, I'm not really ranking these in any way or, or not. This is You can get one of these carded even for about 38 bucks or so. I think I saw a high of about 45 and uh, loose carded on this is not much of a difference. The, the loose ones are selling for 10 to 35 bucks. So 
you know, shambling mount if you're looking for it or man thing. Uh, he can be had for relatively cheap. Which is going to take me to my next one. And uh, this is a two-pack of these PVC figures and the Skeleton Soldiers of Sith. Yeah, I picked this one just because it had Sith in there because it made me think of Star Wars and I thought it was kind of cool. So these Skeleton Soldiers, I do remember having them. Again, they didn't do anything apart from just stand there. So they were just kind of, yeah, they're almost statuesque. You put them on a on a shelf or on a bookcase and, you know, use your imagination. But as far as uh, play goes, there wasn't much to be offered because they were just posed PVC figures. But still, pretty cool nonetheless. And uh, these uh, Skeleton Soldiers of the Sith, Again, it's about 45, 50 bucks. You know, carded. 15 to 20 loose. Uh, and I don't know if you're going to get one or both or or what you might find if you were to find them out there. But uh, it's still relatively cheap, all things considered, with, uh, you know, toys this old. You know, because we're talking about this is uh, early to mid 80s that uh, I think these figures came out. So I got one more of these uh, PVC type figures. And this is going to go back to more of those uh, posable, bendable uh, figures. And this is the. Uh, carrion crawler uh that i uh that i found and this thing actually sold pretty well this sold for 144 bucks so this one was a little tougher tougher than most carded uh, obviously but you can see it looks just like a you know a bendable rubbery pvc thing where it were you know underneath you could see like they have the little dots where the you could do the extra bend i guess that gave it a little bit of breathing room some air holes that helped you do the uh posability uh spots within it so you could see underneath they would have like those little uh holes in the plastic where the uh, wire frame underneath could uh could hold its position a little bit better but uh yeah so the carrying crawler is the the last of those uh Eh, monster PVC type bendable figures that uh, we're looking at here. So this is going to take us into our monsters and bases section of honorable mentions. And with that, uh, my first monster that uh, I want to look at here is a, uh, I don't know if it's dragon or dragony, but uh, this is about a hundred bucks you know, roundabout for this, uh, for this figure. It almost looks a bit like a, a bit like a Griffin, or, uh, you know, it's got a bit of a lion head or almost like a... It's not just a straight dragon that you would expect with this total scales. Like, it has claws and it looks like a bit of fur and the wings and uh, a mane. So it's definitely got a different look to it. So this uh, dragon figure is one of those monsters uh, that were a little bit on the larger side. There there was a couple of uh, monsters I do remember. Uh, there was like a hooked hand character as well. Then uh, I think I had an image uh, in, in the slideshow earlier of him, but th some of these monsters were really cool and, uh, and they still sell pretty well. So as I showed before, we have the Fortress of Fangs. I had to have the base, this set. I actually covered this on, uh, the vintage, you know, toy market watch a couple of weeks back. Cause I saw one sell because this thing is, uh, not easy to find altogether. Uh, in fact, this is, you know, you can get it, and there's sales of about two hundred and you know seventy six bucks. I saw one sell for about four hundred and five dollars, but that also had some. It was complete and it was open, but it had some extra figures with it as well. So you're usually getting these in lots for the most part, but you're still gonna have a hard time finding a complete, and especially with the box. But you can see it's a little base. It, it's pretty cool. There's like a gargoyle gargoyle on top. There's like like little traps and uh, treasure inside, and even some of just the little pieces of this can sell for uh, decent money. Um, as you can see, there's just some little bits and parts that you can find with some of these things. And I know I've shown that, that kind of stuff before, but just finding the parts can sometimes, uh, you know, make you a few bucks because somebody's out there trying to complete their set when they just need that piece and you might have lucked into it somewhere along the line. So I got one more for you. And uh, this background hopefully didn't give it away too, uh, too much, but uh, my last one is Tiamat. And this is the five-headed evil dragon. Again, I showed a quick image of it earlier. Uh, pretty cool. I mean, it is, you know, it is a dragon. It's got five heads. It's got the different colored heads because, you know, the heads did something different. You had, like, the ice dragon, the flames, and and a lot of different stuff. A lot of fun ideas that can play out of this, you know, this fantasy world. And uh, this is a toy that is not easy to come by. Or at least not come by on the cheap. This uh, is about $577. On the average, I found three sales, and the high on this one was about six hundred and eighty-one bucks. So, uh, not a cheap, not a cheap figure, especially if you can find it, you know, whole. 
because that is not always the easiest thing to do. I mean, some of these things, I found parts where, you know, just the wings uh, were selling pretty well. Uh, I think I found a, a bit where, you know, you could get this like with a missing wing for like 170 bucks, right? And, you know, that's not a complete toy. But then if you want the wing, somebody else bought just the wing for $150 just for the wing, you know, to add to it. So this, I mean, you put it together, that, that person's into it for a little over 300 bucks, they might make out. So yeah, maybe you can build. Maybe it makes sense to build and go through the parts. But $150 for a wing is crazy to me. I understand this stuff is tough to come by. I, I'm not saying it's not worth it. It's just, it's still kind of insane when I think back on this. Like I never would have imagined that uh, when I was a kid and pulling the wings off just to see if I can switch things around and uh, to think that I was taking something that was 150 bucks off of my toy. Anyway, so that is my list. Again, Dungeons and Dragons is a cool line of toys as well as just, you know, it is. It's Dungeons and Dragons. People know what it is. I think they're revamping it with a movie because the, the one movie I do remember going seeing uh, like 20 years ago was that Marlon Wayans one, Jeremy Irons. Whew, that was that was rough. That was rough. So hopefully if they're doing another one, they do it right and do it justice because it, it is a rich world full of a lot of you know characters and creatures that you know we take for granted today as a uh, yeah it's just commonplace. But a lot of these ideas were unique for the time. So with that, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Please like and subscribe to my channel as well as Tales from the Flip Side. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this look back on toys. I realize I am kind of focused and locked in on the 80s right now. I will try to do some more modern stuff as a uh, you know, as things come along, but I'm just doing what uh, what's coming natural to me. Uh, what, what is gathering my interest week to week? So uh, I did see a suggestion for Buck Rogers uh, in one of the comments. I will be covering that. I do remember Buck Rogers, and I had a few of those as well. So I might start working on something for that. I don't know if it's going to be next week, but it'll probably be soon. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, uh, I take suggestions. Throw them out there. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to look at, and uh, we'll just run with this because, again, I'm having fun. Hopefully you guys are having fun with these uh, look back on the toys, and uh, I will see you all you know, next week.